All right, so we've waited months for this card to finally be ready, and just a few weeks ago, we finally got to see the actual performance numbers from a bunch of different movie websites, Hardware Canucks included. Check it out. Now, unfortunately, the card itself wasn't actually ready at the time of release, so we've had to wait a couple weeks to get our hands on it. But here it is, the first one to hit store shelves from PNY, um, and with companies like XFX stepping out of the race, it's nice to see a few other companies sort of stepping up and offering their cards. So we're going to unbox it, take a quick look actually before we get there, um, highlight some things on the boxes as a card board sleeve, nothing too important on the front. We have all the technologies down the bottom, 3D vision, surround, physics, CUDA, SLI, all that fun stuff. On the back, a bunch of PR stuff. Uh, the specifications, more of the, of the technologies. You can check the specs out at the end of the video. Um, now, one thing that I do want to highlight is the minimum system requirements for this card. One thing that stands out is the minimum 600 watt or greater power supply with 42 amps on the 12 volt rail. That is a serious power supply, and we're not talking your cheap $20 eBay power supply either. Um, you need to have something that is quality to be able to power this thing. Uh, the other thing they suggest is ab about two gigs of system memory with four gigs recommended. So you need a fairly, well, not a fairly high end, but you need a fairly good mid-range system with a lot of power in order to complement this thing. Now the other thing about PNY is they do now offer a lifetime warranty, which is great to see more companies jumping on that bandwagon um, and supporting their cards for longer, you know, standing behind their work. Otherwise there really isn't too much important on it, so let's actually take a look at the real goods. Uh, what we have here, just a quick start guide which basically shows you how to install the video card into your system and how to install drivers. Whoop -de -doo. Uh, next on the list, we have the video card drivers themselves. Uh, now, these are using the 197.03 drivers. NVIDIA has released as of April 9th um, the 19741, I believe the number is, drivers. So head over to NVIDIA's website if you have this card and download those. As far as accessories, VGA to DVI adapter, pretty standard. Uh, the PCI to, or PCI power and Molex adapters, again, pretty standard. Um, now this is a bit different. We have the mini HDMI into, well, I guess regular HDMI because that is actually an output featured on the card itself. So let's get to the meat of this thing. We have the GTX 480 from PNY. It's definitely fairly beefy, a little weighty too. What you'll see on the top is we have a solid metal cover that is over the heat sink which is actually fairly shiny, though a little fingerprinty. Uh, we have our fan situated at the back of the card, and we also have air intake ports at the back, and then on the PCB itself, you'll actually notice that there is uh, holes in the PCB in order to allow for more ventilation. On the side, we have a six pin PCI power and an eight pin PCI power, so this thing is serious. And we also have four, we have four copper heat pipes here, nickel plated and that is to transfer heat from the chip onto or into the or rather heat fins that were we're going to open it up and see those in a second um, as far as outputs go we have the dual dvi and there is also an hdmi connection and then a bottom spot specifically or only for venting now surprisingly there isn't actually aside from this on the side here and up front there isn't a lot of other venting on it it's all pretty enclosed so we're going to take off this shroud and actually take a look at the card underneath all right, so taking off our shroud was actually surprisingly easy. It's just a little plastic thing there with a bunch of clips. Now, this thing, I don't know whether to be scared by it or rather impressed. We have this sort of turbine looking fan at the back here, which is fairly thick. And there's also this solid metal plate that extends over the VRMs and the uh, RAM chips that extends from the all across the PCB. So everything is going to be kept cool. And we have this meaty metal heat sink up at the front. Uh, as you can see, it's a fairly dense, uh, I believe it's aluminum fin array um, that extends pretty much three quarters or two thirds of the length of the card here. And one thing I should correct myself on is there is four, four copper heat pipes that extrude from the card, but there's actually, if you can see it there, a fifth that is sort of tucked away inside. Now these go straight through the metal heat sink. They come out the side um, and that is how the chip is going to dissipate its heat. Um, other than that, that is pretty much, much the cooling system. NVIDIA is sort of breaking new ground with this. You haven't really seen, I can't say I've really seen a video card that uses uh, heat pipes in order to transfer heat. So it's a little bit of an experiment for them. Um, but if you've seen any of the reviews, you know that something this beefy is, well, it's really going to be needed.
One other point I should make is that the GTX 480 is actually a standard 10.5 inches long, which is more of an ATX standard and is going to fit in a majority of cases. Now what we saw with the HD 5870 from ETI is the fact that it's a little over 11 inches long and many cases won't support it. And then you have this brute back here, which is about 12 and a half inches long and finding a case to fit that is actually incredibly difficult. You find a lot of users wind up having to buy a whole new case just to fit the card. We're gonna be doing some gameplay videos, testing out some benchmarks and doing some overclocking with this card in the next few videos. So be sure to check back. Thanks for watching.